So I farm so hard, the employees wanna find me. And then wanna hire me. What's 100K to a guy like me? Could you please remind me? Farm so hard, this ain't easy. Working late nights, you best believe me. My grades can only go ace. Never wanna see another B unless I'm Jay Z. Farm so hard, let's get paid. Hello, everyone. My name is Christian Kroll. I'm a current EDICU pharmacist at the University of Iowa Hospital. I'm here with Erica Waldsmith, a current PGY-1 at the University of Iowa that is interested in pursuing a PGY-2 in emergency medicine, here to talk about the COCA trial. Now, the COCA trial comes at a great time of this year where we've already had multiple trials come out in cardiac arrest management from the TTM-2 trial that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, the Capital Chill trial that came out in JAMA, the VAM intrahospital cardiac arrest trial that came out in JAMA as well, and then the early epinephrine trial that came out in JAMA Open Network. So this year, I kind of think in 2021 is the year of the cardiac arrest trial. Now, the COCA trial is the calcium and out of hospital cardiac arrest trial that now, again, with the low rates of ROSC and the lower rates of survival that we have for out of hospital cardiac arrests, we need a medication or we need something to potentially increase these numbers. So the COCA trial looks to improve, to show a pr improvement in those numbers. Now, Erica, could you kind of walk through a little bit of background about this trial and the methods of why this, of how this trial was conducted? Absolutely. So this trial was conducted in central Denmark. It was a placebo controlled parallel group, double blind superiority randomized controlled trial. They looked at the administration of calcium during out of hospital cardiac arrest, like you said, and they hypothesized that it would result in improved return of spontaneous circulation or ROSC. So calcium has been known for its inotropic and vasopressor effects, but is usually only administered during cardiac arrest during um, a underlying cause such as hyperkalemia, hypocalcemia, or calcium channel blocker overdose. So they utilized a two-tier EMS system where they had ambulance crews and position manned mobile emergency care units. They included patients at least the age of 18, plus having out of hospital cardiac arrest, plus at least one dose of epinephrine. They excluded anyone with a traumatic arrest, known or suspected pregnancy, prior enrollment in the trial, if they had received epinephrine from an outside source, and a clinical indication for calcium. They randomized one-to-one -to, -one to a rapid bolus of five millimoles of calcium, which equates to about three quarters of a one gram carb eject here in the United States. They also randomized to normal saline. And then after the second dose of epinephrine, if the patient was still arresting, they were allowed to give a second dose of the trial drug. Their primary outcome was sustained ROSC. Secondary outcome was survival at 30 days plus or minus favorable neurological outcome, which was defined as a modified Rankin score of zero to three. Perfect. Now with this, they included 400 patients within their trial with the average age of 68, 71% being male and 75% uh, of them having a non-shockable rhythm. The study drug was given within 18 minutes of cardiac arrest, which I think is a very good number. And 60% of the drug was given through IO. So they allowed IO and IV administration of the medication. Erica, how did our results uh, look from the, this trial? Yes. Yeah, so the primary outcome of ROSC showed no difference between the two groups. However, there was a trend towards normal saline with a significantly reduced number of patients receiving ROSC in the calcium group. For secondary outcomes of 30 days survival plus favorable neural outcome, there also was no difference. However, there was again a trend towards that normal saline group with 9.1% versus 5.2% having that 30 day survival. If you look at the favorable neural outcome component, 7.6% of the normal saline group versus 3.6% of the calcium group had a favorable outcome. Definitely. So these numbers do definitely do not show support for calcium chloride in the management of out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. And because of this, the trial was stopped early based on potential harm within that calcium chloride group. So looking at this trial overall, we see a survival rate of about 10% in the placebo group, which isn't necessarily, which is pretty similar to other studies that have came out as well. And when we look overall at the trial, we didn't see any difference between IV calcium chloride and IO calcium chloride, pretty much the same was found throughout this trial. 
So with overall within this trial, Erica, do you have any major takeaway within uh, of how to use calcium chloride within out of hospital cardiac arrest? Yeah. So I would not recommend calcium for the routine use in cardiac arrest. I think that it should be utilized in specific situations where they can identify calcium related causes such as hyperkalemia, um, calcium channel blocker overdose situations like that. Definitely. So this is something that, uh, this is a, this is a medication that I totally agree should not be used routinely in out of hospital cardiac arrest management. And for those very limited circumstances could be beneficial, but again, was not studied in this trial. So overall, the COCA trial showed us that calcium chloride and out of hospital cardiac arrest had no different, uh, no comparable difference in ROSC survival or survival with uh, improved with uh, good neural outcomes compared to placebo. With this, there was actually even numerically less ROSC that happened in the calcium chloride arm. Because of this, we should not be recommending the routine use of calcium chloride within out of hospital cardiac arrest management. Overall, thank you, Erica, for attending this podcast with me and discussing this new trial that came out. And uh, similarly to how Jimmy wraps up every Farm So Hard podcast, you don't have to be an ED pharmacist. You don't have to practice in an ED, but wherever you practice pharmacy, make sure you farm so hard. Thank you.